All right, let's talk about There's Something Wrong With The Children, Amazon Prime's latest 2023 horror mystery release, which is directed by Roxanne Benjamin and written by David White and TJ Kimfel. As with all of our honest reviews, I will be discussing key plot details and events of the film, which contain major spoilers. So if you haven't seen this film and you don't want anything spoiled yet, go and watch it before returning back to this review. Let's get into it. There's Something Wrong With The Children focuses on six main characters who retreat to a remote lodge to enjoy a weekend together and escape city life. We have one couple, Ellie and Thomas, who have brought their two young children along, Lucy and Spencer, and their close friends, Ben and Margaret. After Ellie and Thomas decide to have a night away from the kids to themselves, they leave Lucy and Spencer in the incompetent hands of Margaret and Ben, who manage to lose the kids in the middle of the night. We're very quickly introduced to the names of these characters by everyone shoehorning the name of the person they're talking to in the beginning of their sentence. Although I felt like this was slightly clunky and quite noticeably forced. I'll let it slide in the interests of the 90 minute runtime. However, I did enjoy some of the character development as the film began to unfold and delve into the individual personalities on the cabin trip. Margaret and Ben are very much a couple who are prolonging having children despite the external pressures that are placed on them by their peers. And the film withholds the reason why they're reluctant to take the plunge at first. And I must admit that I was quite intrigued to uncover their reason for this, knowing all too well of the expectations that modern society puts on couples who are hovering around the age of 30 who haven't yet spawned some offspring. In contrast to this, we have Ellie and Thomas who have brought their two young children along for the camping trip, who have clearly had no problem getting married very soon after college and starting their family. But in a conversation where Ellie and Margaret are bonding in the kitchen, Ellie reveals that they've been taking part in swinging activities, where Thomas has seemingly had very little involvement, which I found quite amusing. The poor bloke was waiting on the touchline trying to get subbed into the game, but never quite got on the pitch. And it's clear to see that Ellie and Thomas are compensating for a missing element in their relationship, which is possibly having kids and getting married a little bit too soon. While on the flip side, Margaret and Ben are in the opposite predicament of maybe approaching life with a bit too much caution. As for the kids, Lucy and Spencer, well, they're absolute freaks for the majority of the film, but we'll explore that a little bit later. As the families explore the woods, they come across some ruins that are in the side of a cliff and proceed to explore inside. Again, I like the idea of the cave ruins and I have appreciation for their inclusion in previous horror films that I've seen. For example, it reminded me a bit of As Above, So Below or The Hole from 2001. And I guess the obvious inclusion of that is the Descent films. But this is where I believe the movie takes a bit of a strange turn and the plot becomes a bit outlandish for my liking. The kids find a large shaft in the ruins and become rather infatuated with it, with Spencer wandering a bit too close to the edge before being pulled back. As I previously mentioned, Margaret and Ben look after the two kids on the night time so that Ellie and Thomas can have some alone time together, probably to go swinging again, to patch up their fragmented relationship. And in the morning, both Spencer and Lucy have gone missing somewhere, and it's revealed later in the film that they've returned to the cave again, and they've come back to the cabin acting very differently to what they were before. Their personalities have suddenly become more devious, their intentions can be perceived as sinister, and they have this devilish smile that they're wearing on their face most of the time. However, Ben is the only adult who seems to be aware of the behavioural shift in the kids. There's several instances where Ben sees something that looks threatening, but when intervening, it appears to be something completely innocent that the kids are doing. I really like this conflict going on in Ben's psyche, which consists of the kids gaslighting him while he wrestles with his own realities. One particular scene shows the kids pouring a whole bottle of medication into Thomas's drink, with Ben slapping it out of his hand before he can take a sip, but then it's revealed that the bottle is still completely full of medication and it's this distortion of reality that's blended perfectly with the revelation that Ben was suffering from mental health problems and had lost a lot of previous employment as a result of his difficulties. But as the plot progresses, it becomes pretty obvious that it's not just all in his head and there's something supernatural that's going on and it's connected to the pit in the ruins that the kids have fallen into and returned with insect-like tendencies. We see this as Lucy and Spencer create this completely made up language to communicate with each other, which sounds like their mouths are clicking. As their mannerisms and actions 
actions begin to turn more aggressive. We see a shadow of a giant insect cast onto the walls, but when they walk around the house, it's just their human figures standing there. The kids one by one dispatch of the adults, throwing them into the pit. And this is probably my biggest gripe with the film. It's never actually revealed why they're doing this, what is in the pit, what's the link with the insects. I waited eagerly for 90 minutes to get answers to these questions, but they never came. And yes, I completely appreciate that sometimes everything doesn't have to be revealed, but in this instance, in my opinion, it was just odd and out of place and it didn't really serve a purpose. And I was left with this feeling of pointlessness. I was hoping that there was a reason for all the devious antics and the cryptic writing. And all I got was a three foot Yossi Ben Ayun in Little Red Riding Hood acting strange for 90 minutes with no payoff in the end whatsoever. So did I enjoy There's Something Wrong With The Children? Well, I don't really feel like it was a complete waste of time, but there's also very little that I feel I've taken away from the film as a horror fanatic. The setting isn't anything that we haven't seen before down the years. It relies heavily on that cabin in the woods genre, which has been tried and tested, recycled and reused repeatedly. The opening scene smacks you around the head with a sledgehammer of pathetic fallacy, with lightning flashing across the sky, obviously foreshadowing dangerous events that are on the horizon. But the sound design of the lightning is just shocking shocking no pun intended, because it sounds like they've just ripped it from publicly available stock footage somewhere. And leading on from this, I felt like the music choices in the score were bizarre and just didn't fit with the scenes that they were supporting. As an accomplished musician, I do pay close attention to the sounds or music choices in films and how they play a supporting role during scenes to either accentuate or complement what's happening on screen. But in this instance, they served absolutely no purpose here and I felt they detracted from the visuals in a lot of cases. I felt the imagery was okay. Lucy wore a red hoodie, which had these pointy ears for the majority of her scenes, which I imagine director Roxanne Benjamin wanted to use to portray her as the antagonist of the film with connotations to the devil. And the several moments where the kids have a green twinkle in their eye to show that they're under the influence of another force. And the eyes are obviously regarded to as the windows of the soul. So showing that twinkle signifies a sense of corruption to the innocence of the kids. So I can definitely appreciate some of the techniques used here, but ultimately it's the plot really that falls apart for me in the final act. There's no development whatsoever as to what the ruins are, what's down the pit that's glowing green, why the kids act in this way, what is controlling them and what's the reason for the symbolism of insects. It's these omissions that reduce the quality of this watch for me and it leaves a sense of incompleteness rather than mystery. But that's just my thoughts and opinions on there's something wrong with the children. Did you agree or disagree with anything that I've said in the video? Let me know all your thoughts and feelings down in the comments below. And until next time, I've been Hugh from Unleash the Ghouls and I'll see you later.